Okay, so a lot of technical, diff technical difficulties has been had, but I think finally it works. Uh, I was actually supposed to do a demonstration of drawing black fur in color pencil, um, but me being a technical idiot, <laughs> I spent I think around two hours getting it to work today. Um, it just wouldn't work. <laughs> um, so I ended up kind of giving up. Um, and decided just to focus on the long for it that I was working on already. I had planned to finish this segment first and then filming the bike for yeah, well, this is bike as well. But, you know, me being an idiot with technology <laughs> uh, meant that I hadn't had time to finish this beforehand. So I'll just keep working on this one. The black fur is going to be here. And then the white fur here. Uh, I think I might do a live stream of the white one uh, because <laughs> this was such a fail. Uh, but I'll, see, I'll have a look at it. I actually bought this camera that I'm using right now um, to do live streams. And as you can see, I'm, I'm having a bit of uh, difficult, difficulty uh, with getting it to work with the right lights. Uh, before it was overexposing everything when I put my hand in. and. Now it seems to make things a bit darker. Uh, trying to take out my drawing lamp, maybe that will help a bit. Yeah, that helped a bit. <coughs> so, me being an idiot, not knowing technology, uh, had to uh, get the help from my boyfriend. Who knows how to use technology? I don't. Um, but I'm almost finished with this part, so... Maybe I'll move on to the black fur today as well. Um, I have no idea how to do live streams, so I'm hoping uh, <laughs> that you can actually hear me and see anything. Because I only tried doing a live stream once on Facebook, never on YouTube. And it was a lot more difficult to start it up than I had expected. Uh, the reference I'm working from is of a Shetland Sheepdog, and it's actually the cheek of the dog that you can see here. It's uh, They have this, I think it's called tree color, where they have uh, brown spots like a Rottweiler. Uh, so that's what I'm using for my reference, but I'm not following it very close. Just making it up as I go, pretty much. I always enjoy seeing other artists uh, like in real life or real time. Shows a lot more of the techniques than when it's speeded up, then you can't really see all the small things they do. Uh, so basically, I'm just working my way through this uh, very slowly. Sorry, I just dropped the pencil. Um, building up layers in segments, as you can see. I've got, just going to point with a pencil. <laughs> I've got some segments here and here, overlapping the fur down here. And uh, the same in the brown fur. It's not as important with short fur, I think. But when you work in long fur, you have this uh, tendency for it to come together. And what you want to do sometimes when you're new is just draw a lot of strands. Uh, but that's not going to look very realistic. It's not really going to look like fur. Um, and you're going to have this outcome that is pretty flat. 
So how to avoid that? Um, it will be shown in the full time or the full drawing in the video I'll upload next week. Uh, but I start out by pretty much mapping out where I want all the overlays to be and then work from there. Something I see with new color pencil artists primarily is they are afraid to go too dark. Um, so in areas like this one that's actually pitch black, I see a tendency for people to not really wanting to go black or dark enough. And I think it's because <laughs> most of us have been taught if you had any art classes that you're not supposed to use black. And, all those things. I use black a lot. I just always combine it with some blue or a violet or something like that to make it pop a little bit more. I almost always uh, combine my black fur with blue pencil. Oh, you can't see anything. Sorry, I'm being <laughs> so bad at technology. I don't know why it's so overexposed as well. I feel like it's being very overexposed. What I'm doing here is something that I feel is pretty important when you work in long fur, and that is adding a bit of random stretch hair. Um, that can be pretty scary, but if you follow these segments or what to call them strictly and not having some random bits of hair sticking out, it's not going to look very realistic. So that's just what I'm doing here. And with fur, it's pretty much just like with everything else, you need practice. Um, a pretty good exercise I can recommend is if you're new to color pencil and you want to learn how to adjust your pressure and make the right kind of lengths, is to just draw a lot of straight lines. And it sounds silly and it sounds weird, but just you know, draw a lot of straight lines and do it with different pressure and in different lengths, but determine beforehand how long you want the string strengths or your strides. What are they called? I'm not very good at English <laughs> to be. So basically you just see me slowly building up contrast. Um, I don't want to go forward too fast because you can't really go backwards with color pencil. So if you go too dark, you can't really light it up again. And if you don't see me following the direction of the fur, I'll most of the time be working in circles, especially when you're drawing long fur. You need to make long strokes with your pencil, not shorts. Short, short. <laughs> and that's why color pencil is such a time consuming medium, because you have to work slowly building things up. And at the same time, 
you need to be very careful with your details because you can't really go back. So, just going to use a bit of paint thinner. The paint thinner I use is Mona Lisa Odeless Paint Thinner. I saw Lisa from Luck Fine Art using it a couple of years ago and I decided to buy a bottle and I accidentally purchased the big, biggest bottle they have. <laughs> so I have paint thinner for years. I haven't tried out Sisted. I would like to, but since I have paint thinner till forever, I don't think I'm going to. As I'm applying the paint thinner, I am very careful about still moving in the direction of the fur. If I moved across here, you would see it smear. And then all the hard work you just made would be lost. And at this point, I'm using a minimal amount. Like I'm barely touching the paint thinner with my paintbrush. In my first layers, I don't care so much. I don't know why it's showing up so saturated on my napkin. It's more of like a dusty brown, I mean, like, which is. Try and work with it a little bit to see if I can improve that. No, just screen. I'll have to uh, take a look at that for a, the next time I'll be doing a video. Anyways, that needs to dry a bit before I apply my next layer because I don't want to ruin the tooth of the paper. As I work through my drawings, I usually start by using a lot of luminance, and I also really like the um, Durban drawing that I did a review on. They were creamy and they blend super nice with the paint thinner. But here in my next layers, I'm using a lot more uh, polychromos because I can sharpen them to much more in a point. And I think when you want to have those final fur details, that's something that really helps you. And I think I'm right about my last layer on this one. So at this point, I can apply a bit more pressure. And you can in the first layers. And at this point, I also try to focus on building these different colors of fur into each other. I don't care too much about that earlier on because it's easy to get muddy. And once it gets kind of muddy, you can't really go back. And if you're working on First instance of mission of some dog, you can't just say, okay, I'll just move the brown bit a bit. The brown bit a bit. <laughs> um, so that's always something to watch out for. You don't want to get your colors, it doesn't really match, mixed in too much. I have to find a better angle for this can because it's uh I can see my hand is blocking it a bit. Must be kind of annoying. And then my last step is usually that I go in with my white luminance pencil. I love this pencil, it's so pigmented. 
And it's actually the only one that I have that kind of shares up a redacted colors. Um, the Darren drawing Chinese white also does it, but I feel like it's harder to keep at a sharp point and it crumbles. You can see it there. It crumbles a lot more when you're using it. But it's very pigmented. Pretty good. I need to get some more pencil extenders. I only have three. It's not nearly enough. I have so many short pencils at the moment. It's pretty annoying. And I want to use every single bit of my pencils. You know, they're pretty expensive. So I'm kind of using all my pencil extenders, extenders uh, at the time. I actually find this sort of fur color to be most difficult to get perfect. That and creamy gold retrievers or Labrador's. Those are my uh, nemesis. <laughs> Also Brindle. Brindle is very difficult. I've only drawn uh, my own dog as Brindle. I've never tried any other dog as a Brindle. So I think I'm almost there, whether I want to call this very finished. And then I'm going to go over and work on the black fire. Yeah. I'm one of those people who could easily spend another hour working on this, but it's for a tutorial and I think the main essence is laying up the fur correctly, following the strokes of the fur and the direction of the fur and also the length of the fur. So I think I'm pretty good with that one. So I just got to pull up my reference for the black dog, dog hair. Um, I need to set up a better sorting system at my computer. I can't be the only one. I can't. Okay, so here we go. Yeah. So. Here to begin with, I'm just laying down Great, that is going to be 
lightest areas I have. When I work on a dog fur trick, you won't find white, like clear white in the fur. Um, so I just put down a base of this cold gray. Um, what is it called? Silver gray. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of bluish. Maybe you can see it. Doesn't show up as blue. I don't get this one. Okay. I have to look at it. Um, anyways, it's kind of blue. And that will be the lightest area. Now I'm going against all my rules. I always say you have to follow the direction of the fur. That's true. And you have to draw in circles. Bad Sophie. Bad, bad Sophie. There, that right about covers most of it. And then I want the fur to go in this direction and it's going to be short. So what I'm doing is basically I'm working in short fur strokes. Just one at a time and at this point it, would, it will look messy. Um, I always say that drawings have an ugly stage and for my drawings that stage lasts very long. <laughs> but you shouldn't be afraid of it. It's just a part of it. I think too many artists are focused on the end result of what they're drawing and not the pro you know, process as much. And basically with short fur, what is important is following the direction and following the length of the first strokes, but also it's going to fall around the anatomical structures. So for instance, I'm going to pretend there's an eye right here. And therefore, it's going to go in a little bit more here and then follow around the curve. And if I down here, it's going to go in this direction. Here it's going to do this direction. Here it's going this direction. And this way you can carve out the anatomy of the animal you're drawing. And in the end, these strokes are probably not going to be seen, but I use it as a guide throughout the drawing that I'm creating so I can see where I'm headed. Because once you cover up your initial skits, it's easy to get lost in just doing a lot of strands. And when you're drawing, especially black fur, you want to focus on bringing in some colors to the fur. Because black fur, just as white fur, reflects the surroundings. So if the dog is outside, it's going to be blue tinted. And if it's laying down on the grass, that's something you see often. Then on the top of the dog, you will have a blue reflection and underneath it, like on his chin and stuff like that, you will have a green reflection from the grass. And as a pet portrait artist or someone who's drawing a portrait of a dog in that situation, you need to make up with yourself if you want to include that. Because sometimes it can be out of place uh, if you're not drawing the grass along with it. But in most cases, it looks pretty good. And it helps tie in that realism to your draw. Just light, light layers all the time. I feel like black fur is one of the most difficult colors to draw and 
what did you think of it? You're like, oh, black, how difficult can it be? Um, but I feel like black fur is one of those fur calls you just have to build up. Like you really need to spend time on building up your colors and getting contrast good. I'm just slowly building it up. Slowly. Mm I actually think if you're new to color pencil that some of those exercises where you have to draw like a bowl or a square and then shade it in is a really good exercise because it helps you think about where your light is coming from and how that will affect upon the surface and the shape you're working with. So I can really recommend those. I think you can find a lot of guides online. I'm not sure actually. I think it won't be too difficult to uh, to find some information about that. Uh, so at this point, I think I'll go over to the paint thinner and see how that gets. As you can see, it darkens, darkens. Oh, it's so hard. Uh, it darkens it up quite a bit. And unlike before, I'm not being that careful about how much product I put on the paintbrush. I think it matters a lot in your last layers when it's just like those final kind of touch-ups you're working in. But when you're working on your first kind of layers, where you just need to push that pigment into the crevices of the paper, I don't care too much about it. I don't worry too much about going in the right direction as well. I mostly go in circles to really push it in the paper. The important thing, of course, is uh, when you use this much, is it needs longer time to dry. It's not going to be as fast.
the batteries of the camera to six. <laughs> Sorry for that. I'm trying to record this with my DSLR at the same time, so I have to keep uh, track of that recording. You can only record for 20 minutes at a time. So I'm trying to keep up with that as well. Anyways, this is kind of time consuming. Um, some people just rush over this version, this little base with paint thinner. Um, I spend a lot of time <laughs> because I like having the pigments really down into the paper and not worrying about those crevices as much. So I'm spending a lot of time on getting that how I like it. And you can sign, kind of see the direction that I want the photo to go in. Kind of. It's not perfect. Well, we'll get there, we'll get there. <laughs> and these areas here are pretty much around the edge here. It's pretty much going to be totally black, so I don't care too much about if they look a little rough. Um, not perfect, but it is what it is. Uh, and that's not what I'm going to spend a lot of time on perfecting. I'm um, sorry, just looking for a shot And still sharpening. <laughs> there we go. So in order for your dark areas to actually look dark, it's not enough using black. Like I said before, you have to sort of mix it a bit gender. And some, I like dark indigo. What's this called? This is called red violet. I used that a lot at dark indigo. Because they help you to achieve this black look. Um, that's much darker than if you just use the black pencil. Uh, when I'm doing chauffeur, I prefer to keep my pencils pretty sharp at all times.
and it looks silly while you're working at it. Uh, you can look like a total rainbow, but I promise it's you're just gonna hang in there. It's gonna look great in the end. I sometimes uh, post work in progresses on my Instagram, where it just looks like I <laughs> mix a lot of random colors together, especially when I work on dog noses. I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of colors in there that can look kind of silly. Anyways, I think that's it for today. Um, I'm going to finish up this drawing and I'm going to upload it uh, sometimes next week. At this point, I am editing a video that will go up either tomorrow or the day after that, where I am drawing a Rottweiler in pastel colors. <laughs>